You might think that charging lithium-ion batteries is fairly straightforward. Most chargers have a setting for lithium-ion batteries. So if you want to charge a pack like this, what do you do? Put it on lithium-ion, plug in the battery, press start? Well, yes and no. G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews and today I'm looking at how best to charge your lithium ion battery pack. I've already done a few videos on lithium ion, even show you how to build your own pack out of these LG HG2 cells. And this is a 3000 milliampere hour pack that I built myself. I use it on my 5 inch freestyle quad and I get over 20 minutes of flight time. Pretty impressive really. Uh, but how do I charge this battery? What's the best way to do it? Now I mentioned you could just simply connect it up to your four button charges, select lithium ion as the battery type, press start and come back when it's done. Although I don't recommend leaving any lithium battery unattended while charging. The reality however is a little bit more complicated because it depends on what you're trying to achieve. You can charge these packs on the LiPo setting as well and the results will be somewhat different. So to understand why that is, let's take a look at the difference between the lithium ion charge and the lithium polymer charge. To understand why there's a difference we need to go back a little bit. The early lithium ion cells used a slightly different chemistry to the ones we see today and that meant that they were limited to a maximum charge voltage of 4.1 volts per cell. If you tried to charge them any voltage higher than that you risked bad things happening, fire, explosion, floods, famine, pestilence, all sorts of things like that would in invariably occur if you tried to charge them to higher than 4.1 volts per cell. So that's why the lithium ion setting was different to the lithium polymer setting. Now of course we've moved on a bit now. Technology has advanced and the new cells you see here like these LG HG2s and the Sony VTC6 they have a slightly different chemistry and they actually recommend that you can charge them to 4.2 volts per cell just like a LiPo. So yes it is safe to use these packs just like you would a LiPo and charge them on the LiPo setting. The most important factor is the current that you charge them at. Now most LiPos these days will accept a charge rate of up to 5C. So if you've got a, a 1000 milliamp hour battery if you're really in a hurry you can charge it at up to 5 times 1 amp which which is 5 amps. Of course it's generally recommended you stick to the 1C rating which means whatever the battery capacity is that is the current you charge it at. If you've got a 1500 milliampere hour pack charge it at 1500 milliamps or 1.5 amps. Now in the case of these lithium ion cells it's recommended that you charge them at 1 half C. So for this 3000 milliampere hour pack I charge it at 1.5 amps or 1500 milliamps. That's the recommended charge rate and surprisingly even so they do get a bit warm when you charge them. I never have felt a lipo get warm when I'm charging it at any rate but these lithium ions they do get a bit warm so don't push your luck and try and charge them at high current rates even though the data sheet says you can charge them at up to 4 amps I would not recommend it certainly not for the life of the battery and even from a safety perspective it's not recommended. So we go back to which setting to use on your charger. Now you can use either LiPo or lithium ion and both will charge your battery. The difference being that if you use the lithium ion setting you will not get the full capacity that the manufacturer rates their battery at. In the case of these LG cells that's 3000 milliamps but only if you charge it on the LiPo setting. If you charge it on the lithium ion setting you get less than that. To find out how much less I charge this pack on the lithium ion setting to 4.1 volts per cell. Then I reset the charger to LiPo and started the charge again. As you can see in this footage it took a while but I got an over 300 milliampere hours more capacity out of that battery by charging it as a LiPo. That's 10% of the total battery capacity I was so I got by using the LiPo setting. In fact it's more than that because that last 10% happened at 4.1 to 4.2 volts so in terms of energy I'm getting about 13% more energy out of the battery charging it with LiPo than with lithium ion. So you might think well let's always just use LiPo. The manufacturer says it's safe, we get more capacity out of the battery, what's not to like? Well there's one little thing. Now Service life is an important aspect of batteries that's often overlooked. You don't see manufacturers often quoting how many cycles you get out of their batteries. Uh, they'll quote the voltage, the current, the capacity, but they won't say 500 charges or 200 charges or whatever guaranteed because it's a pretty, sometimes it's a rather embarrassing number. 
And if you're a person that values the service life of your battery, if you want your batteries to last a long time, then you take care of them. And if you've got lithium ion packs and you want them to last a longer time, then here's a tip for you, charge them as lithium ion batteries. The reason for that is that when you charge any lithium chemistry to 100%, you are going to reduce its life more quickly than if you charge it to 90%. You only have to look at electric vehicle manufacturers. Virtually all of them recommend that their vehicles are not regularly charged to 100% capacity. It will reduce the service life of the battery. And it's the same with the batteries we use in our models. It's the same with these lithium ion cells. So if you just want to use your battery to get extended flight times or more flights out of a pack, then charge using lithium ion and they will last a lot longer. But if you want to get maximum capacity for that super long range flight or that super long endurance flight, then use the LiPo setting. You can use either as required as you feel you need, whether you need the full capacity of the battery or whether you'd rather just put less strain on the battery. So you can use either quite happily. Now, if you also want to get maximum life, don't drop the battery right down to its minimum voltage. Now for a LiPo, the minimum voltage you want to go to is about 3.3 volts per cell, but with a lithium ion, you can go down to 2.5 volts per cell. And if you do that, you'll get the full capacity of the battery, providing you've charged it to the full voltage in the first place. However, if you just stop flying at 3 volts per cell, you will again increase the service life of your battery. Your battery will last longer. You won't have to replace it as quickly as if you really thrash the ring off it. So I would say to you, for sport flying, just for generally getting nice long flights and cruising around, if you're not absolutely concerned about maximum flight times, then charge with the lithium ion setting and stop flying before you get to 3 volts per cell. You'll get a good long service life out of your battery. Again, another factor is don't cane them. Don't cane these batteries. If in a normal cruise flight, my 5 inch quad is drawing under 10 amps, which is well within the capacity of these batteries to deliver current. You can cruise around forever at 10 amps. If you try and punch a 5 inch quad with a 4S pack, it'll try and draw as much as 100 amps. These cells are not designed for delivering that kind of current. If you do that with a lithium ion pack, you will damage the cells and damage them pretty damn quickly. So you will lose capacity, the internal resistance will rise, you even risk a bit of a fire if you really, really cane them too hard. So I would say, make sure you're very gentle with your throttle, keep an eye on the current, don't go above 20 amps for any more than a few seconds and try and keep down to well under 20 amps. The lower the current you draw, the longer the life of the battery. And if you treat them properly, these packs will last a long, long time, probably longer than your lithium polymers, because lithium ions they just seem to have a longer life than lithium polymer. Um, I don't know why, maybe just the chemistry. But that's it. That's all I've really got to tell you today. I hope you have learned something. And uh, if you've got questions, if you've got comments, anything to say, go down to the question comedy bit provided by YouTube and I will do my best to answer your question and I read all the comments. Also, you'll notice there's no mid-rolls in this video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. I hate mid-rolls and so should you. Here we go, folks. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.